Hunting big fish is an odds game. Put in your time, line up countless variables, and it's possible to catch giants of all species. Location and timing are key. You simply can't catch fish where they don't live. Early season muskie fishing is an interesting case in point. For years, it was generally accepted that North Country muskies don't start biting until the 4th of July. As summer heat waves signal the movement of muskies to classic shallow water rock piles and weed beds. So where were the fish before the fireworks? 25 to 40 pound fish still have to eat, right? In the past several years, a number of muskie fanatics and guides have started to unlock the early season habits of massive toothy critters. For starters, they're suspended in what appears to be no man's land. Seems a little bit like zombie fishing at first, with little or no logic to it. Just go out into the center of the lake, over deep water, and cast or troll. But the truth is, big fish don't wander aimlessly anywhere. They're on a figurative blood trail, following the best food available. Now it's time for the rest of the story on early season muskie. On today's edge, James Lindner and Northern Minnesota muskie guide Josh Borowski think outside the box for early season muskie, chasing suspended fish on Lake Vermilion. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Nothing perturbs you more than this. A lot of times you pick up a piece of garbage, you know, and you catch a big muskie because of it. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, you don't pick it up, it, I will. It's good karma. No, I always do. <laughs> yeah. There's one. Oh, there you go. Huh. Yes. I like that. You do the, the net there, Mr. Yeah, James? Yeah, I'm getting I'm moving. <laughs> I think we might have a pretty nice one here. Oh yeah, James. <laughs> Trying to keep her down here. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, let's get let's All get that right, little launch. Ready? All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry steer about over. that. Here yeah. we go. Come here, buddy. Nice one. There you there go. go. Good job. That's a wow. nice start to the morning, huh? Well, I'm so impressed. <laughs> We're out wandering aimlessly in the deep basin, casting a baits exactly two feet below the surface. And it, it was pretty fast. There this fish right here. Fish. Oh, wow. look at that, James. Get her, get her out of there. Look at that beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah. This one really seemed to be keying in on the hard to soft bottom transitions. Yeah. Lund Boats has two smoking deals for making memories this summer. Lund 1650 Rebel XS is an incredible boat at an incredible price. This boat is filled with features like side and center rod lockers, aerated live well, and a heavy duty trailer with fold away tongue. Add the optional flip up seating and ski pylon for family fun. Or choose Lund 1625 Fury XL. It has all the fish catching features you'd expect from Lund at a jaw dropping price. For more information and a free catalog, go to LundBoats.com. Let us make this absolutely clear. The days of wasted casts and missed opportunities are over. New Mega Imaging takes fishing into the megahertz range for the first time. Because higher frequency sonar means higher frequency of this. Without a doubt, it's the most detailed picture of the world below ever. And it's only from Humminbird.
auto stow and deploy, power trim, and your choice of iPilot or iPilot link. Hey. Altera from Minn Kota. We can't believe it either. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. This go, fish right here. Oh, look at that, James. Get her, get her out. <sighs> look at that beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah. This one really seemed to be keying in on the hard to soft bottom transitions. Yeah. I'm gonna slide her back here. Yep, get her back in the water. Yep. There she goes, strong yeah. release. There we go, strong you, release. Good job, you know what? The th what's really cool, I've been fishing with uh, Josh Bravoski. Uh, Josh actually is a Minnesota muskie guide. We're up on a beautiful Lake Vermilion, and we're gonna look at uh, a really cool musky pattern and you can see there's some boats around around us that we're fishing out in the open water but what these guys have really uh figured out is a uh, really fishing muskies out of the box and this is fishing for suspended fish early season musky fishing a lot of times people say that what muskies don't really bite on structure until what fourth of july yeah well the f fact of the matter there's other things going on in these systems than we really know about and that's what we're going to look at what josh and what these guys have figured out is really super cool mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a lot more to it too than just kind of aimlessly uh oh yeah we're not fishing the, here, the abyss so. it's not zombie fishing yeah. at all no yeah. the, as you can see we just got out here we've been fishing for about 15 minutes and he caught a, a really nice one i'm, I'm really looking forward hey. to get getting a bite here food is the key to catch any fish these muskies are targeting large schools of ciscos and whitefish both of these species are large, cold water minnows that suspend in deep water throughout most of the year. In spring, with cooler water temperatures, they move up and down in the water column following their favorite food, zooplankton and phytoplankton that make vertical movements at low light and throughout the night. The muskies position directly over these schools of bait fish and simply wait for their prey to move up in the water column. Most of these muskies are within 10 feet of the surface no matter what depth you're in. Side imagery on my Helex depth finder was critical to identify hard to soft bottom transitions, baitfish schools, and muskies. Josh theorizes that hard to soft bottom areas form walls or edges when the plankton moves vertical. Interestingly, over the last six years of fishing this pattern, he's caught numerous muskies in the exact same areas, which are focused around these deep hard to soft bottom transitions. You know, you'd look at uh, this big basin in here and you see it all the food. How many fish do you think are out here? Well, I'll say enough to make me smile yeah. for sure. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think there's a fleet of muskies out here. Um, and I mean, just in the last couple days out here between me and my other guide buddies and um, guests that I've had in my boat, I mean, just in the last 24 hours, there's been 10 fish caught. Uh, you know, pretty much as far as we can see in each direction right out here. And those are just the ones that were caught. They were fish that were lost, lots of fish that were seen. For 70 years, you've known us for our high performance rods. Now, it's time to meet our machinery. 32 pairs of hands, touch, craft, and test each St. Croix rod. Overkill, not with our reputation on the line. St. Croix, the best rods on earth. Cold weather got you down? <laughs> Didn't think so. In the Midwest, we don't fear weather. We embrace it. We live outdoors. We work and we play outdoors. We hike, we hunt and we fish. This is a winter wonderland, and we own it. We were born in the Midwest. We are outdoors. We are Mills Fleet Farm.
There's no place like this. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. I mean, just in the last 24 hours, there's been 10 fish caught, uh, you know, pretty much as far as we can see in each direction right out here. And those are just the ones that were caught. There were fish that were lost, lots of fish that were seen. There's a lot of fish out here right now. I mean, I think the majority of the adult musky population, the big fish, and even a lot of the medium, like 38 to you know 40 something inches, they're all out here too. And that's why we're out here. It's just a numbers game. There, there you know, there's enough of them out here to, to bump into one fairly frequently, even though we're fishing out in the middle of the lake. Today we caught our first fish casting. As a general rule, to initially find fish, Josh does a lot of trolling with boards and crankbaits. Some of you may ask, where do you start looking? The key is deep water basins. Most of these areas are deeper than 45 feet that can maintain cisco and whitefish populations throughout the summer. In some lakes, we fish over 100 feet of water. We believe that a large portion of the muskie population directly after spawning head out to these deep water basins to feed. Once the surface temperature goes above the 70 degree mark, the cisco stop coming to the surface and the muskies head back to shallow water feeding zones around the 4th of July. One of the, one of the challenges with muskie fishing, just in general, whether you're fishing the open water bite or, or any, any particular muskie bite over the course of the season is there is a magical switch with muskies. And when the switch goes on, they eat. And when the switch is off, they don't. And I've come full circle on this concept in my muskie uh, career. When I was younger, it was a lot easier on the ego to say, well, I didn't catch them because they're not biting today, right? And then eventually, you become a better angler and you, you get more and more versatile with your techniques and you start to have the idea, well, they're always biting, but you got to have the right thing on. Then eventually, if you do it enough, you get really good at most of the techniques and you go back to, no, there's a switch. <laughs> and when the switch is on, you catch them. And when the switch is off, you don't. Muskies, I think more than any other fish, it is just so kind of bizarre and, and intriguing and almost kind of creepy, like how wired together these fish are with when they eat. And I know some people have a hard time like buying into that concept. A lot of times when I'm guiding, you know, I'm just trying to get people to buy into the idea of, hey, like we are fishing over these fish pretty much all day. I'm really confident I know where they are. As far as lures go, you know, based on the conditions we have today, it's gonna be this, that, or the other thing. But there, there is a switch, and if you don't believe it, all you really have to do to, to see it firsthand and be like, wow, okay, there is, there is a switch, is if you go to a tournament, a musky tournament, like on the pro circuit, they actually have a format where instead of having live weigh-ins, they have a, a judge boat format. So uh, everyone has a marine band radio in their boat. And when you catch a fish, you have to call a judge to your boat when you catch a fish. And so if you fish with your radio on, you can actually hear, right, when people are catching them and when they're not. In most tournaments, it's, they all kind of go the same. We take off in the morning and somewhere in the first few hours, the switch goes on. And, and it's, hey, go, boom, we need boom, a judge boom, over boom. here. And all of a sudden, like three or four guys will catch oh, them. Or, or sometimes like 15 guys. Yeah. 15 <laughs> guys will catch them. Yeah. It's just, we need a judge here, we need a judge there, we need a judge here, we need a judge there. It's just like fireworks going off, right? And if it's good conditions and a good bite, that window will, will last longer in time. And you might get, you know, a couple extra ones throughout the course of the day. But a lot of those tournaments, You'll get a window uh, in the morning for maybe 45 minutes or so, give or take, depending on the conditions and the bite. And then after that, it is radio silence for like six hours, man. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing. And you know with a big field like that in a pro event that everything's covered. There's guys fishing open water, shallow deep, everywhere in between, jigs, top water, jerk baits, trolling, you name it. Somebody's doing it and it doesn't matter who you are and what you're doing, the switch is off and they are not biting. Ooh, wind's picking up, James. Maybe we'll get a wind, oh. 
you're talking about those changing environmental conditions. The other thing, and you know, I've seen it really uh, big, is when one of those changes they actually occur simultaneously with moonrise or moonset simultaneously. I mean, one of the best days I know Jeremy and I had, uh, it actually, we had a storm front rolling in simultaneously right on moonrise. And it was the weirdest thing in the world because Jeremy caught one, turned around, walked to the back of the boat, made another cast and reeled about five feet. He says, I got another one. It is bigger than the last one. In, in that probably half hour period or 40 minute period, we had, we hooked seven fish. Paid to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line. Can't get enough angling edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. Yeah, Linder here for Angling Buzz. I'm Tony Road. Brian Rolston. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web. Current up to date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. One of the biggest things to really catch any different species of fish is actually just figuring out what they're feeding on. And when you look at this open water musky fishing, you know, we, we caught one fish casting early on, but as Josh will give us a little bit more details on generally you wouldn't start out that way you'd start out doing what we're doing here trolling in right. the and you give us a little bit of insight why that would be right so i spoke earlier on that fish we we're, we are cheating a little bit we we have a little previous knowledge because i'm out here every day right so but when it all started for me learning this bite it, it, on, on almost any lake it's going to start with trolling because it's just a a very efficient way to cover a lot of water and look on your electronics for those hard to soft bottom transitions that we were talking about. Um, also looking for baits um, and if you get bit that's I mean obviously you just caught one trolling and it's easy to duplicate that but um, you could also argue it might not be a bad idea depending on the depth that you caught the fish at to drop the trolling motor down right there and make some casts right in that area because a lot of time there's more than one fish um, in the same general area out here when this bite is on. But trolling is like a good starting point to kind of window shop the spots that you might want to cast later. Um, find, you know, find the area where there's the most bait, find those transitions, which a lot of times those two things go hand in hand. But what about the, uh, the timing of this? Right now it's like what musky season opened up, what, two weeks ago? Or is it three weeks ago? Yeah, two and a half weeks ago. Two and a half weeks ago and realistically, the section of the lake we're in, a lot of the fish spawned in these areas up on these big shallow fat flats. We got a bunch of some creeks that come in and we've got big shallow weed beds. Those fish spawned out up in those shallow bays and what do they do? Shortly after spawning, they come up and they turn around and they swim straight out to sea. 
And a lot of times these fish are really high over open water and they're targeting what is the largest uh, really, really primary forage for these fish, which are tulabies and whitefish in this particular lake. And as you were saying, this exact pattern is going on in a lot of different lakes in Minnesota to right now. The majority of the lakes yeah. probably. In partic uh, particularly, you're talking some of the largest fish. For trolling, crankbaits are king. Big, small, and in between. For years, smaller lures were the primary baits used for the early season open water trolling game. Recently, magnum crankbaits like matlocks, headlocks, and pelagics are the rage among hardcore muskie commandos. All of these baits have a wide wandering action at trolling speeds from two to five miles an hour. Today we're fishing with St. Croix's nine foot heavy power Bojo trolling rods. Reels, size 47 Daiwa Sea Line line counter, spooled with 80 pound test Suffolk's performance braid. The Sea Line is Daiwa's classic trolling reel, but following the shoot, we got our hands on the new Lexa line counters. This is a low profile line counting reel that serves two purposes. You can cast it or troll with it. You get a lot of bang for your buck. There we go. Whoa. Wow, that thing just crushed it, man. Wow. Oh, it's a big, I think it's a musky. It's not a huge one, but yeah, musky, sweet. Cool, there you go, buddy. Okay, yeah. Hey, we're on the board. Huh? Check that out. Sweet. You have to have the right gear to pull big baits and boards. The boards we are running are Offshore Tackle's SST Pro Mags, which are designed for heavy bait trolling applications. Some of you may be wondering, what lures do you want to cast in zombie land? Most of the fish are really quite shallow, so surface lures, soft baits, bucktails, gliders, crankbaits will all work when the fish are feeding. It's right, on, it's right near that co coordinate again where we just saw a musky. Right. Got him. Good one, James? Yeah. I am ready. I am ready. There you go. Where you want me? Oh, on this side here. Okay. He's hooked good. Okay. There we go. Whoa, whoa, there we go. Come here, buddy. Oh, he made it. Come he here, buddy. Get him in there. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> okay. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Mr. Shadzilla. Come here. Okay, there. There we go. You ready? Okay, we're going to lift her. There we go. Get her back into the water. Beautiful fish. Look at that. We'll have to get her back pretty quickly. Come here, buddy. Ooh. You ready to go? A slow roll. Over the course of this two day trip to Lake Vermilion, we boated two fish both casting. We had four follows, no fish trolling. Two days after our trip, Josh was out guiding and had a stellar low light trolling bite with three hey, fish, a 56, a 55, right. and a 54. Now that's incredible musky fishing. Today, some guides focus all their early season musky efforts in open water. The interesting part of this story, the same suspended bite goes on in a lot of lakes all across the North Country and few, if any, people target them. Food is simply the name of the game when it comes to catching big fish. If you want to get in on some of this action for giant muskie or any of the fantastic crappie, largemouth, smallmouth, or walleye fishing Lake Vermilion has to offer, look online at Lake Vermilion Resorts and they'll get you pointed in the right direction for a truly memorable vacation. Woo! Look at that thing! It's a monster! Yes! Whoa! And just the other day, I was doing a radio interview with a guy I've known for many, many years. And uh, one of the questions he asked me, he says, Al, why do you keep doing what you're doing? And I thought about it for about three seconds. And, and I said, 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 because I don't know how to really do anything else. There's two important parts of my daily life besides my family. And uh, uh, it's fishing, the fishing industry, and the Word of God, the Bible. And uh, uh, both 
of these elements, fishing in the industry and the word are part of my every single day life. Uh, uh, and I, I share it in all these closings on the television show since day one. I've combined both of them with real life experiences of, of other people and myself. And I get numerous, numerous emails and in, in, in notes and letters and comments like this. The vast majority of them are uplifting. Uh, and that keeps me going. It's really what motivates me. I want to read one of them to you. I kind of going to take snippets out, out of it so it don't take so long. I met you one time in 1999 in Sioux Falls, Ontario at the Maple Leaf Motel. You and Ron were there to fish a smallmouth tournament over the Labor Day weekend. I was there musky fishing. One of the nights at the hotel, I remember you witnessing to me and gave me your testimony on how Christ changed your life. You likely would never remember me, but I never forgot what you said about Christ being the best thing that ever happened to you. He saved your life. I devoted my life to Christ and was baptized on July 3rd. I no longer lived the life I lived before. I'm close to finishing my ordination to be a pastor in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and have been discipling other men to know the Lord and Savior through sharing the great outdoors like yourself. I just wanted to reach out and thank you for your obedience. You're a great inspiration and fellow brother in Christ. My four children also love to watch your fishing show and are avid anglers themselves. I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart and may God bless you richly now and in eternity. Lord bless Dean Kramer. All I can tell you, it, this isn't giving me a big head. I'm not he here to, to pat myself on, uh, 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 on the back. It's things like this and a whole lot more that keep me going. This is why I do what I do and in many cases why I close these shows the way they are. The impact that I've been blessed and fortunate enough to put into people's lives, I don't take lightly. I take that responsibility seriously. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.